already recording so hi you guys so welcome to my channel i'm back with a new video and we're gonna check out this japanese guy i think i had to check the comments quick because the title is just he hits so hard he could literally kill somebody but uh naoya inaoi sorry if i'm pronouncing his name wrong we're gonna check him out the monster we watched him before and we see mike here too so it's gonna be a great video like. Hey, look up this young fighter called the Monster. You ever hear Monster? Yeah. No. Monster. Japanese fighter called Monks. This is the Monks. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy dude. Now Ye Inoue, also known as the Monster, has taken if Mike say so. by storm. With a record of 20 wins, zero losses, and 16 KOs, Inoue has become one of the most feared and dominant fighters in the sport. This documentary will explore the life and career of Nao Ye Inoue, from his humble beginnings to his rise as one of the best boxers in the world. Oh, look at his eye. This oh, is Boxing Matrix. Enjoy this video. Yes. Inoue was born in April of 1993 in Kanagawa, Japan. From 1993, me too! At a young age, he was fascinated by boxing and would often watch fights with his father. He started boxing at the age of six and quickly showed a natural talent for the sport. As he got older, Inoue's love for boxing grew stronger. He trained hard, honing his skills and perfecting his technique. His passion and dedication paid off as he started to make a name for himself in the amateur scene. Inoue's amateur career was nothing short of impressive. He won numerous national and international tournaments, showcasing his speed, power, and technical skills. He was known for his quick hands and accuracy, and he quickly became one of the top amateur boxers in Japan. One of Inoue's most notable amateur accomplishments was his win at the 2010 Japanese National Championships, where he won the gold medal in the flyweight division. Now, whitewash in the World Juniors. See, I like when they get head protection. I like that. Good start. See, his first senior World Championships, age 17 to 34, of course, the age category for this competition. This was a significant moment in his career as it solidified his status as a top amateur fighter and put him on the radar of many professional teams. Inoue turned professional in 2012 and quickly made a name for himself in Japan. He won his first six fights by KO, showcasing his That's devastating great. power and punch accuracy. It was 2013 where he would be met with his first major challenge. This fight was against Ryochi Taguchi for the Japanese light flyweight title. Getting the victory would mean that Naoye would be immediately met with more competition in the United States. The fight started off with both fighters feeling each other out and testing their range. Inoue looked sharp, showing off his speed and power as he threw crisp combinations. Taguchi was patient, looking to counter Inoue's offense. Taguchi came out more aggressive in the third round, trying to pressure Inoue and push the pace of the fight. Inoue remained calm and composed, using his footwork to evade Taguchi's attacks. The fight had gone to the distance, and in the 10th, as both fighters were massively exhausted, they were just throwing haymakers. Get that 
uppercut. Inoue's victory over Taguchi solidified his status as one of the top fighters, and it set the stage for many more exciting fights to come. The WBC light flyweight. It was 2014. Adrian Hernandez was the champion. It was the Mexico. first title shot for an international championship for Naoye. This meant that if he was to show the world what he is capable of, he had to do it now. Fight starts, and both fighters look to establish dominance in the ring and learn the rhythm of each other. While Inoue threw some hard combinations, Hernandez was patient, looking to counter Inoue's offense. In the third, Hernandez was looking to punish Naoye, as he was mostly losing on points. While he tried to establish pressure, Inoue didn't seem to get intimidated and continued to land heavy shots, and Hernandez's face was showing signs of the damage. <laughs> He like teasing them in a little bit and then just hitting them double. Ten times harder. The fight would come to an end in the sixth round as Inoue let Hernandez tire himself from throwing combinations. Exactly, like he later say, adjusted with the right hand and snapped his jaw. <laughs> Now Ye was the WBC champion and became the youngest Japanese world champion in history. Inoue's dominance continued as he moved up in weight classes to win the WBO Junior Bantamweight title. His opponent this time, Omar Narvaez. However, it would be this fight that would establish Naoye's superiority in the fight business. From the start of the fight, we could see why this was a complete mismatch, as Narvaez was knocked down in the first minutes of the fight. Not once, but two times. <laughs> Yeah, it's a different level to the punches. With adrenaline running through Naoye, he started the second round with bad intentions, looking to knock the head out of his body, and that's exactly what he did. Naoye was now Finito. rightfully called the, the monster. The following fights were easy for Naoye, defending his belts and knocking people out in the first rounds of their fights. It would be around this time that his fights would catch the eyes of promoters like Bob Arum. On his way to become the pound for pound king, he would challenge Jamie McDonald for the WBA regular goosebumps. belt. The fight was short. In a way, displayed his power with the first combination he threw, and McDonald felt the weight of the blows. <laughs> I know that 
laid flat. Moments later, a quick left hook landed high on the head, robbing the Englishman of his equilibrium, and a right hand left hook to the body dropped him. From now on, the future of boxing was here. Now Ye Inoue would get his big fights. There's no such thing as monsters, right? Tell that to Emmanuel Rodriguez, who was chased, caught, beaten up, and relieved of his IBF bantamweight title in two rounds by the Japanese sensation. In the white, in a way with a startling record of getting things done quickly. Um, Rodriguez started coming forward. Uh, Step forward and getting that jab in and a right hand as well. Any round is a new way. It's a not great ratio of a happy Rodriguez never off his feet. Big right hand. Quick, anyway, his early on, Rodriguez took it, gritted on his gum well, shield and came and back defense. with a flurry of his own. Toe to toe action, first round, spectacular. Oh, they're, they're winging these punches in, these two. It's almost a match over. And that's, I think, why he does the average like... ratio that he has, a very, very good. This has been a good start from Rodriguez and there's the Inoue, who also claimed the vacant ring championship at 118 pounds with this victory, landed a huge left hook in the second, which floored the Puerto Rican heavily. Come from and the area, and, and I think that made a difference. Well, for this fight, this a couple there. Five those punches from Inoue. And there's a right hand gone in two from Inoue. This is a, a fearsome flurry, and he's down. He's got him with a left. The writing was on the wall because there was so much time left and Rodriguez was no sooner up than a left hook floored him again. The defending title holder wanted out, but bravely rose to face the inevitable. Oh, this is unbelievable for Inoue. Five times he's gone down. Rocks to the core. Another count. It's over. Michael Alexander waves it off in the second. I like to perform aggressively. That's how I fight. And I performed very well tonight, said Inoue in his post-fight interview. However, Donaire was able to regroup and start to find his range, landing some hard shots of his own. As the fight progressed, both fighters continued to trade shots, with neither one gaining a clear advantage. Inoue was able to land some hard shots, but Donaire was able to counter with his own combinations and quick footwork. In the later rounds, Inoue started to take control of the fight as he was able to land some bone-breaking shots and put Donaire on the ropes. Despite being on the defensive, Donaire continued to fight back, trying to turn the tide of the bout. <laughs> In the end, the fight was a close and competitive battle between two of the best bantamweight yes. fighters in the world. Oh, 
Inoue was able to secure the victory by unanimous decision, becoming the undisputed bantamweight champion and cementing his status as one of the best fighters in the world. That was beautiful to see, respectful. Now, Naoye Inoue was widely considered one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world, and his reputation as a knockout artist continued to grow. He would meet with Nonito one last time in June of 2022 for the best to thrive. Like the first fight, Bull still threw and took bombs in a wild start, but Inoue got a quick finish this time around. And while the Filipino showed heart, he was dropped again in the second round, which prompted the referee to step in and call it. Right, 